You know what I like? Sweater quantities of yarn. We should talk about those. I usually uh, have a podcast that I do on this channel, but I was recently inspired, and specifically I was inspired by a video by Marlene Snitz, where she went through her sweater uh, quantity stash and kind of talked about the yarns a little bit more and what she wanted to do with them, if she had plans for them. And I think that's really fun. Like many of us, I have a, a modest stash of sweater quantities. Some of these have patterns that I want to make with them. Some of them have kind of a loose idea and some of them have no plans whatsoever, but I want to talk about them. Let's get started. I'm so excited for this. I don't have a particular order that I'm going to be doing with these. Um, and I also know that some of these I've talked about before and some of them I haven't. Um, so I do plan to include the quantities that I have along with, if I can find it, the price that I paid and the price that they normally go for. I buy a lot of my yarns on sale, uh, especially the ones that I purchase without a specific pattern in mind. Usually I got on sale because I was like, Ooh, that's a fun yarn that I'd like to try. I'm going to buy about the amount that I could make a garment out of. I'm also going to try to stick to sweater quantities. Um, I do have a couple of t-shirt or summer top quantities in my stash that I'm not going to include in this video. There's not very many of those and they're less exciting. So <laughs> let's talk about the stuff that I'm excited about. Uh, the first sweater quantity I've shared already, cause this is a recent acquisition. So if you're familiar with my podcast, you may have seen this. This is the Valley Yarns Northampton by Webbs, and it is a worsted weight yarn. And this is in the colorway Lake Heather. And I'm actually refilming this video because the lighting was terrible the first time. And look how pretty this is. This is a gorgeous yarn. It's very soft. Uh, my husband, I talk about how he's a little bit more sensitive to wool than I am. And he can hear me right now. He's over there. Uh, he might get a sweater in this. So this is a winner that I'm very excited about. I don't have definitive plans, but I think this is going to become the Cascades sweater by uh, Michelle Wang. It is a Brooklyn tweed pattern. I'll put a picture of it over here. It is beautiful. It's got um, some textured stitch. It's got some cables. And I think it's going to be a really nice addition to my wardrobe. The quantity I purchased of this, I have... Sorry for a lot of crinkling that's going to occur in this video. I'll try to edit that out, but if you're very sensitive to that, just be aware. You may not enjoy that very much. <laughs> I have six balls of this, and it is 247 yards a ball. So that will usually get me a pretty decent sized sweater. Um, I know that sweater quantity is a different distinction for everybody. I am a pretty average height, average size American female. Um, I am 5'6". I do have a short torso, so I get away with a little bit less yarn per sweater quantity there. Um, but I have a like 36 to 38 inch bust based on how well I've been eating lately and the the time of the month. So that's about what I consider like sweater quantity. That's everything about that one. I'm going to speed through that one because I have talked about it pretty recently, but I'm very excited about it nonetheless. Mm. All right, next sweater quantity. The next sweater quantity I have is this. I have four skeins of this Blackberry Ridge Woolen Mill um, sport weight yarn, and this is one of their like natural colorways. This is the 60% gray. So they have one darker and two lighter, I believe. They might have a they might have a plain white as well. I have a sweater knit with the 20% gray by itself, and that is gorgeous. I also have a sweater that I just recently finished and talked about on my podcast that is one of the color like dyed colorways of this yarn, and that is in the dark bronze colorway, and they're all beautiful and I love this yarn. It is technically a sport weight, or it's at least called a sport weight. I don't think it is one. Um, it's also woolen spun, which means that all of the fibers are kind of in all sorts of different directions when it's spun up. And so it has a lot of extra air. So 
Let me show you. Let me get right up close here and show you how this yarn behaves. So you can see, ooh, it's very thick. And then when you pull it taut, it thins out quite a bit. So like, look at this, worsted, sport. <laughs> so it knits up. You can knit it at a lot of different gauges because it's going to knit comfortably pretty tightly and then it's going to puff out to fill that space. And that I love. It creates a very dense but light sweater. Mm. And it doesn't smell aggressively sheepy. It's got a little bit. But it's very soft. doesn't have a lot of vegetal matter in it still. I have no plans for this. <laughs> I have no plans for this. I bought this completely impulsively because and if you're interested, I suggest you go sooner than later. Um, I checked earlier today uh, when I filmed this video the first time, but Blackberry Ridge Woolen Mill is uh, planning to retire. Basically, they're looking for someone to purchase the mill from them. And so they're not taking any fleeces for other people that they're gonna spin up. They're only spinning up like the remaining stuff that they have. So if you wanna buy a woolen mill, I know a guy or I know of a guy. <laughs> Uh, but in the meantime, if you want to go purchase some of this yarn, uh, this is the cost per skein that I paid. This was not on sale. I think it would make a really nice anything, honestly. Like I said, I have one sweater in this yarn held double with a um, Surrey alpaca, and then I have one that is just by itself, and they both work out beautifully. I also have leftovers from both of those, so this could become like a colorwork sweater with a little bit of the dark bronze and a little bit of the 20% gray, and I think that would be really nice. Just a nice yoke sweater. Oh, lots of potential, lots of possibilities. If you have any thoughts on what to do with this yarn, I'd love to hear it. Let's move on to something that definitely has an assigned pattern. Does this look like a sweater quantity to you? Because it doesn't to me but it is. <laughs> I have not knit a lace weight sweater before, and I'm probably an insane person for thinking about it. Uh, I bought these specifically with a pattern in mind though, and that is the Be Mine Blouse by Park Williams of Park and & Knit. And you can knit this in other uh, yarns. You don't have to knit it in lace weight. In fact, on the Ravelry page, she says that you can knit it in lace fingering or even DK and it's just gonna change the density of the garment. I'm fine with that, but her sample is just so, so beautiful and airy, and that's what I want. Honestly, I haven't seen a pattern in Ravelry for this pattern that I didn't love, so I think I'd be happy with any weight. But I purchased this, and I think it's gonna be lovely. I don't think it's a bad color on me. We'll see. Maybe I'll put it on and I'll just look dead and then I'll be a, a beautiful corpse bride. But this is the West Yorkshire Spinners Exquisite Lace Base. It is 80% uh, Falkland wool and 20% mulberry silk. So it has a beautiful luster to it. Ooh, so excited. And I think that the silk will help strengthen the lace weight yarn as well. So I won't be as worried about snags or uh, breakages in that sweater. Like I said, this does not feel like a lot of yarn, like enough to produce a sweater. But as far as this goes, they have measurements from a 28 inch bust all the way up to a 60 inch bust. And the largest size uses less than 2000 yards, which is wild to me. Each of these skeins is 875 yards. So I should have enough to make uh, my size of yarn. I got this on sale. Um, that's part of the reason I picked this colorway. I also just think it's nice, but I usually gravitate towards not pinks. So we'll see. But I got it for this much. You can see I don't know these things off the top of my head because I tend to kind of girl math my projects. Part of the joy of the projects where I buy yarn first and then find a pattern later is it kind of feels like I'm just making a pattern for the cost of the pattern and I don't have to, like the yarn was already in my stash, so it's free. I didn't pay money for that, um, but this one I should know, but I got it on sale, so more girl math. So this is how much I paid for it and this is how much it is not on sale. So hopefully that's not bad for a sweater quantity. I'm not gonna think about it until I'm editing this. So have fun editing, Elizabeth. 
think that's everything I have to say about this yarn, but uh, stay posted if you want to watch me knit it up. I'm sure I will talk about it on a podcast episode, potentially banging my head against a wall because I decided to knit a lace weight sweater pattern. <laughs> this yarn, I also have a pattern picked out for, but I'm not tied to that. So if you have any other ideas for this quantity of yarn, um, let me know. This is specifically designed to go around these two skeins. This is my birthday yarn from last year that I splurged and picked out and paid for, not on a sale, from my local yarn store, Yarn Social KC, who I love. They're fantastic. And they did a trunk show with Plied Yarn Company last year, possibly last year. Anyway, that's why they have this. And these are gorgeous. These are 50 gram skeins, 108 yards. And, um, this is 100% wool, but as you can see, it's a two ply yarn and one of the plies is pretty consistent, this beautiful lime green color. And the other one kind of goes back and forth between a like brown and like a peachy tan. Um, these are beautiful and I would like to use these for color work. I got two because I wanted something that would go well, but didn't have any crossover. And so this one is a consistent peach or consistent pink, like a bubblegummy pink that has a blue strand that goes back and forth between like a deep navy and a cerulean. And I think that those will play really nicely together. Um, it's not a like long-term color changing yarn like a lot of these barber pull yarns are these are consistent throughout the skein so it's not like i'm going to get a, a gradation or anything like that these i think i'm going to use as color work in the loom luma by sari nordland and it's a beautiful beautiful pattern and i've seen a lot of versions on ravelry where people will change it from a one color color work pattern to a two color color work pattern or is that a two color color work to a three color color work. Either way, um, there's usually just a main color and a contrast color. And I've seen some people modify it so that there's two contrast colors for like the different bands of the floral work. And I think that'll work really nicely with this. I did get some main color yarn for this pattern. And for that, I have some Drops Alaska in the second color, yeah, color two. So there is a brighter weight white than this but this is, it's not very like off-white. It's just warm. It's just a warm, bright white rather than like a cold, bright white. I have 15 balls of this. And this is, again, a 50 gram ball and 77 yards per ball. So this is a little thicker than this is, but I want a nice thick sweater. I think it'll go well. And I don't think this will get lost, certainly. One thing that I was worried about is that this is obviously very easily stainable, but I think because of the nature of these yarns, again, I haven't worked with them before. This was a impulse birthday purchase. <laughs> I think because of the nature of these yarns and how they are separately dyed before they're applied, I hope that they do a really good job of making sure that their dyes are really fast so that they're not going to get immediately muddy um, even when you're just knitting it by itself, when you wash it. And I think that that will hopefully mean that it won't transfer to the white yarn as well. I am gonna swatch with this and I'm going to wash my swatch pretty aggressively. This one, I'm definitely going to wash it in hot water. Typically with color work, when I'm actually doing care for garments, I will wash them in cold water so that I'm not giving that dye a chance to sneak off. So we'll see how that goes. Once again, I'll keep you posted. These skeins I paid $28 a piece for, which is a lot um, for me, at least. For some other people's yarn budgets, that might be totally reasonable. But for me, that might be the most I've spent on a, yeah, for 50 gram balls, this is definitely like the most expensive yarn I bought, but I'm in love with it. So things we do for love. The Alaska was a little bit more frugal. I looked it up earlier and 
I only have the pounds of what I spent. I guess I could look up my bank statements, but basically all of the uh, Drops Alaska that I bought for this would equivocate to about 35 USD. So 35 plus 28 plus 28. This is an expensive sweater, but I'm really excited to knit it up. I hope it works. Um, and again, I'm not like married to this pattern. So if you have other ideas of things that you think this would look really good at, let me know. Next sweater quantity. Okay, this one's gonna be fast. This is yarn I got from a thrift store in my city. It is <laughs> potentially an impulse purchase that I'm not going to do very much with. This might never become a sweater, but it is enough to make a sweater, so I'm including it in this video. This is, to the best of what I can tell, <laughs> some Kerasoft uh, from Heirloom Yarns, I believe is the company. This is discontinued. It is acrylic, which I don't normally buy. It is two ply sport weight, and it is true to color. It's extremely bright red. Um, I think this is gonna be a holiday sweater, perhaps. Um, I like The more I look at it, the more I'm like, I just want a bobbly raglan, uh, double folded neck band, just to wear around the holidays with this. Um, I think it'll be fun. Hopefully it won't take very long because I plan to knit it, knit it at a looser gauge because it is acrylic <laughs> and I don't like acrylic at a tight gauge because then it doesn't drape at all. So this will probably become a sweater. Here, maybe if I hold it over here. No, it's blowing out a little bit, but it is just extremely bright and I'm into it. I'll take pattern photos when or project photos when I actually knit it up into something. But that's that. Not very much to say. You can't get it anyway because it is a discontinued yarn. Moving on. We are almost to the end, by the way. I only have two more sweater quantities, so thanks for sticking with me. These two are probably the ones that I'm most excited about, so I've saved them for the end. I said I wasn't going to have any sort of order to it, but I am the type of person who like enjoys dessert the most, so save the best for last. This one I have a pattern picked out for. I bought this yarn with that pattern in mind and it's definitely going to become that pattern. This is going to be for an all-over color work sweater <laughs> and I don't know how long it's going to take me to make because I've never made an all-over color work garment before. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm going to take everything out of the bag and then I'm going to record about this. Okay, so I'll show the pattern photos first because this was the inspiration. So this is the Fertigenzer by Anna and Heidi Pickles. And I bought this pattern a little bit on a whim. I'd been eyeballing it. And then, this was a while back, they had posted something on their Instagram about like having a little bit of trouble making rent that month for their shop. And like, if you are going to purchase any of our patterns, like if you'd want to do it now, that'd be great. And so what more motivation did I need? Um, it's a pattern. It's and it's a perfectly appropriately priced pattern in my opinion too. Um, so I had to buy it. And then of course I had to buy yarn for it. I have five colors of yarn because I overpurchased because I wasn't sure how exactly the ones that I was picking out online would play together. And because I knew I would use this yarn on something else as like an accessory amount. So there's one that you need more of. Um, and that is the one that you use for like the collar and the neck bands. And I chose this dark navy for it. Oh good, that's coming up so much better than it did with my lighting this morning. Oh, it's just a true dark navy. This is all gonna be in Cascade 220 fingering from Cascade Yarns. And I've not used their fingering before. I have used their um, worsted weight in both the like superwash and non-superwash options. And this feels just as nice, so. Very pleased with this, very excited to work with it. Um, a little intimidated to get started. And also we're moving into warmer weather. So probably gonna knit some other lighter weight options first. But I digress. This colorway is the 8393. Um, very boring. I'll put it all down below so you won't have to like look these up if you want to find them. This is gonna be my main color. And then of course I had to have a white had to have something light to kind of balance out. This is color 8505. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. This is 
color 9619. And these three I'm sold on. These three were the ones I knew were going to play well together and that I was going to want in this sweater. Then I have two options. You see my dilemma. These are color 1072 for the brighter aqua one and 9593 for the slightly more muted. Honestly, this is very similar to a lot of the stuff that I've been just eyeballing lately. It's these kind of muted sea blue sort of colors. And I think, oh my God, it's so pretty. I think this is gonna be the combo. And they get about equal play in the sweater other than the blue, so I'm not really worried about placement um, or other than the navy that has the cuffs and collars too. So I don't have to worry about where to put these. Actually, that's a really good color work sweater uh, pattern if you kind of like struggle with, oh, what would look good where? That one kind of, you can't mess up because <laughs> um, they all touch each other the same way. It sounded a little weird. So this is the option I think I'm going with. This I think would also be very nice but I just don't think I'd wear it as much. And also because I think this, honestly, I want it for an accessory. What says, I love you and I want you to survive more than knitting somebody a ski cap in this bright of a color. You are not gonna get missed in an emergency situation if you are wearing a hat that looks like this. So that'll be a gift, a very wonderful I love you gift. And I do have two skeins of this. I have two skeins of all of these colors and five skeins of the dark blue. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven skeins. And I paid this much per skein. So the sweater would cost this much, which again, I'm gonna just forward that suffering on to editing Elizabeth. I'm very excited about this. I think that this sweater will hopefully last a long time. It'll be very warm and sturdy. Um, if I can get the sizing right and get my gauge right, um, I think it's gonna be honestly a pretty easy sweater if time consuming, because it is all over color work, fingering weight. Mm. So very excited about that. Onto my final sweater quantity. If you are a knitter in North America, you know her, you love her. This is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Sport. I have a sweater in this already. I love it. It's soft enough. This is actually even softer, I think, than the other colorway that I have. The other sweater I have is in the Sapphire Heather colorway, which is beautiful, by the way. Um, and I have like a leftover ball of it as well. So there's always the opportunity for color work, but this is the Camel Heather colorway. And I'm sorry for the state of this ball of yarn, these come in packs of 10 and I bought 11. <laughs> I don't know why they were on sale. I should have just gotten more. This is so affordable. Um, I love this yarn. These are 50 gram balls. My brain always tries to convert everything to what is that for a hundred grams? <laughs> um, but for a 50 gram ball, these are $3.99 not on sale. How really, how upset could I be about that? But I think I got these um, at like $3.40 a ball, which is not that good of a sale, but it is not expensive yarn in the first place. And I'm very excited about the colorway. Like I said, I don't have a pattern picked out for this. I think, I think what this wants to be is a cardigan, just a nice, neutral color cardigan I can throw on in most weather, maybe a light cable pattern, um, maybe a textured stitch, hell, maybe just stockinette. Um, but I think that a good sport weight cardigan pattern is what I am hoping for with this. That's what it's saying to me. So maybe I'll do a video uh, soon, or at least before I cast this on, surely looking at some sport weight cardigan patterns and trying to narrow down what's available and let this yarn kind of pick its own adventure. I am limited to yardage because like I said, even though this is a lot of yarn, 
if I were to do like a heavily cabled pattern, I probably can't <laughs> make at least like, I can't make a long cabled cardigan with this, uh, even with my torso being on the shorter side. I will have to be a little bit judicious. So that is one of the problems with working from a sweater quantity and moving to a pattern is that you probably have enough to make a cardigan. But whether you have enough to make the cardigan you want, it's just part of the fun. That's all the yarn quantities that I have to share with you today. Uh, thank you for watching, especially if you got this far. I would love to hear if you have other ideas, even for the yarn that um, I already have patterns assigned to. Always down for other suggestions. It's not a sweater yet. And the great part about knitting is even if I'd already started it, I can rip back and turn it into something else. I do have a podcast that will be out the week following this, and then hopefully another non-podcast episode the week after that. Haven't thought that far ahead yet, but if you want to stick around, please subscribe. And thanks for watching. Happy knitting. Let's try that again. <laughs> I'm not enjoying this extra. It got very like. It got very wordy. Also, kind of like hippie.